but the most requested video that y'all have had. There's like three big ones and this is one of them. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Freya's channel today. We have a video to film, huh? Let's take this off since you'll be filming. In case you didn't know, Little Miss got spayed recently, so. Yeah, shaky, shaky. She's been having to wear like a one piece onesie. By the time this video is out, her whole like spay journey video is already up on this channel. So you guys can check that out. If I don't know, you're curious about how we prepped, recovery, cost, <laughs> all the things with spay that's in a whole separate video. But since I'm gonna be watching her, she won't be able to like get to her sutures or anything like that. So we can take it off for the video. So from today's title, you already know what we're gonna kind of cover. And this is probably one of the most, I hate being that person or that like influencer YouTuber kind of person, but the most requested video that y'all have had. There's like three big ones and this is one of them, which is how we taught Freya to heal. One, I will say she's not perfect at it anymore. You know, through the regression phase, we're having to like retrain some stuff. So this is gonna be really good for us to kind of start over with the basics to show you how we did it. When she was little, her heel was on point. So I'm gonna show you guys how we did that. And basically I'll flat out tell you now that every dog goes through a regression phase. I can't guarantee how big it'll be or how hard it'll hit your dog, but they will go through a regression phase. And my only tip, if I could go back, would be to keep trying training, keep working on it. Don't get lenient, stand your ground in terms of like making them do what you're asking them to do because they're gonna wanna challenge you. And we kind of lost some of Freya's skills along the way through her regression. And if I could go back, I would do it a little bit differently. It's not the end of the world, we'll get it back. This is gonna be kind of like a crash course video or basically a training instructional video on how to, from the beginning, how we went through the steps or what steps we took to teach Freya heal. I already have a video up on Freya's channel of of kind of the opposite where I am starting over and actually reteaching Freya recall and I'm kind of going through that with you guys in real time so that was kind of like part one to reteaching recall or teaching recall this video is gonna kind of cover a lot of tips and I don't want to say from beginning to end but I will show you everything that we did and how we did it in basically this full training video and then of course in future vlogs and future videos we'll keep updating this I will keep updating you on how she's doing especially with relearning it oh my goodness you're gonna take me out <laughs> You're gonna take me out. <laughs> so definitely, if you're new here, subscribe down below. We do a lot of dog vlogs. I do a lot of dog hauls, training videos. I've been doing monthly pup date videos of Freya since she got here at eight weeks old. So tons of content if you're looking for dog stuff, Aussie stuff all of that fun stuff. One, you're gonna need your doggo. So I have Freya here. Of course, she's going to be showing you guys and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do all of this. Two, you will need some sort of reinforcer or treat. Some dogs love treats. Freya is very, very, very food motivated. So we use treats. And if you're curious on the kind of treats that I like to use, one, I use Zook's minis um, a lot of the times, but especially as like a puppy, I just use her kibble and I still use her kibble. What is inside of this treat pouch right now is just her dog food, um, which we feed her signatures. So so you can use your dog's dog food, but if that's not enticing enough for them, you might have to get a dog treat. Freya will eat anything. So kibble works great for her as a training tool, and that's what we use all the time. But I will link my favorite treats down below, and I will link this treat bag down below, because I absolutely love it. It's from Amazon, and this is what I use to train Freya all the time. But if your dog is not food motivated, and maybe they're toy motivated, so find a toy that's going to really like get them involved with you, get them interested in you, and be a reward for them. So when they do something correct, you can play with them a little second, get them a little riled up, like give them that reward. So whatever your dog needs as a reward, that's what you'll need. And then just, you know, some space, okay? And I'm just gonna kind of walk this through and be very like casual about it because I'm not a dog trainer, but I did train my dog. So I just wanna kind of give you guys some tips of what worked for us and I hope that it helps. So I started teaching Freya her heel when she was itty, 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 bitty at eight weeks old. We started immediately almost um, in some of her training sessions and Freya would have about three or four 30 minute training sessions every single day until she was about six months old and so we really drilled a lot of things which is why she was perfect at everything until that regression hit and I stopped doing my training sessions every day for that amount of time so it's a little bit of both on my end and on her end but again we're getting this all back together and so when I say this first part it's mainly because she was so tiny but also I don't think it's terrible to start like this but when she was tiny and I started out teaching her recall I started on my knees and I would just stand in the room here and a lot of times when I'm teaching her a new trick I use 
use the phrase luring, which is basically using that reward or whatever they like and getting them interested in it and then getting them to follow it, put their body in a certain position. You are taking them where you want them to go. And so as a puppy, all I would do is lure her into the position that I wanted. And so I would take her and I'd kind of spin her and then wait till she ended up like right next to me and then give her that treat. Now she's a lot bigger now and <laughs> taller. So it is a little harder to get her to kind of like turn and end up right next to me where I wanted. But as a puppy, it was so, so, so perfect. So if you need to do this step standing up, go right ahead. But also I started on my knees cause she was teeny tiny. And again, I'm just gonna kind of lure her right beside me. Yes. Good girl. And I want to mark where her body is exactly where I want it. So if you guys noticed when she did it at one point, her butt was still kind of curled, like her head is next to me. This is not a heel. This is not the position I want, which is why I'm kind of turning my body until her body is straight and parallel with mine. Yes because she's a little bit bigger now. But when you guys are marking the appropriate or the positive behavior that they're doing, you wanna mark it correctly and what you are actually wanting from them. Not some curved body position because they're gonna learn whatever you're reinforcing, they're going to keep repeating. So you want to reinforce the proper body position that you want and you can be as like lenient or as strict as you want it. Some people teach heel with their dogs like touching them on the side, go for it. I don't really require Freya to be touching me at my hip, I just want her next to me. But whatever body position you want her to be in, when you say heel is what you should be reinforcing because again whatever gets reinforced will get repeated so we're just going to kind of do that again a couple times just so i can show you yes and i'm saying y-e-s because that is my marker cue so deciding what word or if you're going to use a clicker or whatever you want to use to mark that they're doing the correct thing is super super helpful for your dog because there is no why am i getting this treat or like am i in the right position or what am i doing is this something good that my mom wants me to do is this something bad kind of thing and we've been working on those associations since she was a puppy again so the word y-e-s for her means that's exactly what i want do that again you get a treat and for us our no cue kind of thing or that she's doing something that i don't like is uh, uh, uh. so you can kind of pick phrases that you want a lot of people will use clickers for me I did not want to use a clicker because I did not want to be tied to a clicker and I didn't want to have to carry one with me everywhere so I always have my voice and I can always reinforce with my voice and I just found that to be a little bit easier but the clicker would work the same so if you're luring her into the position that you want when she gets there click the clicker give her a treat my yes is just my clicker so we're gonna do that a couple more times just to kind of show you And right there, she got it. Touch. Yes. See, right now she's a little too ahead for me. I don't want that. Again, I'm only going to reinforce the body positions, yes, that I want. I want her level with me. Essentially, I like her shoulders. You try to steal some treatos? I see that. I see that. I want her shoulder blades to be in line with like my legs. It's kind of where I'm body positioning that. But as a puppy, we started just with that. And we would do that a couple times every day for a couple weeks or so. Essentially, she would start picking it up and just going to it immediately once I go onto my knees because they, they catch on. They know what you want from them. If they're getting treats, they're gonna do that behavior. So it didn't really take that long for Freya to catch on to what I was asking her to do. Yes good girl. But to switch it up is I would kind of turn myself this way and make sure that she could do it from anywhere. Touch. Good girl. You're a little too far forward. Yes. Good girl. And I make sure I do it from the back. Touch. Yes. That's not enough. Yes. Good girl. And I'll do it from this side. And I wouldn't just go in this order this quickly. Like I would, where are you going? I would master, yes, one side before kind of switching to the other. You keep trying to steal treatos. You can't have them. You gotta earn them. And so once she felt really good on this side, I would switch to the other side and do some more there. And then eventually once she could like do all the sides, I spent a week or two for a little bit just kind of playing with it and going to all the sides and seeing if she was able to do that. So that way she wasn't used to only giving me that position when I'm facing the door. Like you want them to be used to it anywhere. Now, if you've noticed, I haven't called this anything. I'm not saying the actual phrase that I want her to do. We're not using the word heel at all. And if you don't know the history between like me and Freya, as far as how we train, she knows all of her commands with hand signals as well as verbal cues. So I teach her everything with the hand signal as well. So I don't have to say anything. So for example, I can ask her to sit, lay down. Oh, I spin for us. That's a fancy lay down, which is great. But then I can also, yes, yes. Oh, and a 
roll over. You're just being a ham for the camera and for some Cheetos. That was good. <laughs> so a lot of times I will introduce either the verbal cue or the hand signal first, or I'll kind of do them at the same time. It just depends on the skill. Um, with easy ones like sit and stuff like that, like I taught them at the same time because it was super easy to teach sit. Yes. And essentially you just want to make sure that you are attaching the word with whatever cue you're using. If you're wanting to use hand signals as well, you don't have to. But for example, our hand signal for heel is making like this little signal, but placing it by my hip. Mainly because a lot of people ask me like how I come up with them. You can make anything up, but there are pretty standard. Like a lot of people use this for sit and this for lay down and like random things like that. But for this one, it honestly was because of the luring that I would hold a treat and do the, the lure thing here. And I just already kind of made that hand signal. And so it was easy to kind of implement that, yes, as my hand signal. So that one, a little behind the scenes of like why I came up with that in that way. But that is the hand signal that we use. And so as a puppy, when I started to introduce that, I would, instead of luring her because she should already know by now, I will kind of like hold that treat, but it was imaginary next to me. And she would put her body into the placement that she would need to be in in order to get that treat. That's kind of the next step. Once they master luring, once they're really following that treat super quickly, once you can get their body in the position that you like it quickly and they're, they're learning, you know what I mean? Once they're ready to move on, that is the next step that I took with Freya was introducing that little hand signal and no longer luring her, but just having her get into it. And essentially with luring, having it like right in front of your dog's nose and having to go really slow to get them into that position might be where you're starting. But Freya understands luring because we do this often. So hers is a lot quicker. And so when I can just loop this around really quickly, she's gonna follow that treat. Yes. But also if you're wanting to pull back your luring as they learn it, one thing would be just to kind of like, that's just it, she's not gonna do it here. But instead of actually following her nose all the way around, you just do kind of like a little one. You just like pull it back, <laughs> your head girl. You just pull it back, pull it back, pull it back until you all you're doing is that signal. There's no Trito in there, there's nothing in there. For example, like when I was teaching Freya how to spin, basically the same thing with the lure is I would take her in a circle and mark it and say yes. And then eventually that treat moved away from her nose to a little bit higher than her and I would still lure her away, yes. And then eventually I was able to, my head's gonna get cut off, lure from all the way up here, yes. And then I was eventually able to just do my finger, yes. So that's what I mean by your luring getting like pulled back and you take it back as they learn it. You don't wanna go too fast. You do wanna wait till they're like ready and they've learned the lure that you're doing now. But once you have like pulled that lure back enough and you don't have to like drag it in front of their nose and go super slow, like they're catching on, they know where you kind of want them, they understand what the concept is, that's when we'll take that lure away completely and give them a hand signal or a verbal cue or both. And on the same talk of pulling your lure back, that also means like standing up so again I started on my knees because she was itty bitty eight week old puppy but part of that you know taking that lure away and away and away was seeing if she could eventually do it with me standing up kind of thing and getting her into that body position standing up yes good girl yes good girl and kind of doing the same thing is once we got all the way up yes good girl <laughs> it's a good sit but I want you up yes Good girl. And I would kind of do this, is I would move my body around and see what she would give me. And if she doesn't give me what I want, that's when I would help her and lure her into the body position that I'm asking for. Kind of just letting her like think through it kind of thing. And she's very used to getting treats whenever she sits now because that's the norm kind of thing. So of course she's gonna sit next to me, but I really want her in heel. Yes, good girl. And as I turn, she's probably gonna sit, which is fine. Yes, good girl. And that's just when you would practice. And then you can train this way and see if she'll come over here in this body position. Yes, good girl. But that is how like that naturally integrated like hand signal kind of came in because I'm already holding a treat. And so once I could pull back all of those lures, that is when I would also move to just giving her that hand signal or the verbal cue and start attaching the two. So when I was luring or even when I'm pulling it back again, once she gets there, heel. Yes, good girl. Heel, yes, good 
girl. So I'm marking what the cue is and what I'm asking her to do when she's doing it. And that's what you want to do as you're trying to bridge the gap of knowledge of what is this woman asking me to do? Because if they don't know what you want from them and you ask for it, bless you. Can you ask for it before they've learned that? It's going to get really confusing. So if she didn't already know how to heal and she's just sitting here like this and I ask her to do it and she doesn't know right away, it's going to kind of prolong that learning curve. So in the beginning, you really want to show her what you want from her, which is this body position. Yes. Heal. Yes. Good girl. We mark it. That's exactly what I want from you. Name it something, heal, and reward. And one of the tips that I gave in the teaching recall video is jackpotting, which is essentially giving many, 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 many treats. For dogs, that is way more valuable than getting one treat, duh. But also if you give them a handful of treats, let's say I give her four or five. To her, it's going to be way more valuable and better if I give them to her one at a time versus giving her five treats. So jackpotting would be taking those five treats that I'm going to give her, bless you, and giving them to her one at a time and marking it each time so saying like yes yes like good girl like really rewarding high voices making it exciting now jackpotting really works as you're trying to again teach them the body positions that they're trying to give you so if she gives me the most perfect body position and she gets it right I'm gonna jackpot it but if she gets it kind of right maybe she's too far up but she's like she's catching on that's when I can still mark it and I can give her one treat maybe and not be as excited but then when she gets it that's when I'm like yeah good girl good girl yes yes jackpot 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 because to them that is bridging more gaps that's making more sense to them like when I do it like this I get 10 treats if I do it like this I only get three treats so I'm gonna do it like this it really is just making those connections for them so for example I'm gonna lure her yes good girl yes good girl yes good heel yes good heal. That would be jackpotting. So once you've been able to master again, getting her to be in those body positions, whichever way you're facing, no matter what, if you're using that, just that cue, this is exactly how this works. Except I don't want to sit. Yes. Good girl. Good girl. Yes. But eventually you should be able to give her that cue. Yes. Good heal. Uh -uh. But see how she comes out of it because she wants to sit in front of me and get those treats fed to her. That's not what I want. That's not what I want to reward. I want to reward her staying next to me. So we're not going to reward that. Yes, good girl. And up to you if you want them to sit or be able to like sit and walk with you in a heel. A lot of folks want their dogs to, if you ask them to be in a heel, they do whatever you do. So if I stop moving, they sit. If I get moving, they walk with me. Up to you. She's sitting here next to me, which is fine. And I'm just going to give her that treat for me. But once you can again change directions, give her that cue. Yes, good girl. Yes. Good heel. Once she's doing that pretty consistently in terms of still not luring, but either trying to get her to go into those body positions on her own, you're marking it with your clicker or your YES, you're giving it a name when they're doing it, that's when you can start asking for it before they're in that position. So now I'm able to ask her and I can give her my hand touch. Good girl, sit. Yes. Give her my verbal and my hand signal of heel. Yes, good heel. Don't go in front of me. Heel. Yes, good heel. Yes, good heel. Yes, good heel. Yes, good heel. Sit. Yes, good sit. What you just saw was Freya kind of following me around in a circle. So kind of, I want to say like jumping ahead a step, but that is just something that she's used to doing because we don't really do a standing heel anymore. But that is something that you guys want to teach your dogs of like standing there, being there, and being in the correct body position wherever you want that. And once they can successfully do that on command without the lure, and this is again taking a lot of weeks, a lot of days. This is not something that's going to come like in one day for your dog, no matter the age. But once they're able to on command, command even just come and stand next to you in that body position and in that placement that you want that is when you would take it to the next step of what Frey and I just did of like an around the world and seeing if she is able to stay next to you while your body is moving because right now all we've done is make her come into a heel when I'm standing and I'm planted and so once they're able to master that your next step is to start moving and that could be something as little as like that around the world where again you would just lure that sit and after they're already in a heel, yes, good heel. Yes, good heel. And you can either be giving them treats or just keep luring them. I'm not giving anything to Freya. Yes, good heel. Yes until like I get all the way around the world and I'm going to give her a lot of treatos for that because we made it all the way around. Good girl. And she did a really good heel. That can also be heel. Yes, 
just walking forward. I know you probably couldn't see her there at the end. Yep. Yes. And walking forward. And if they're able to stand next to you, that's what I want. And then making turns and walking forward. So once they're able to do the command on command, that's when you would practice moving around, whether that's in a circle, whether that's forward, backwards. I would just walk around our kitchen all the time, walk around the kitchen island. I would walk through the living room, just walk around your apartment and just practice them walking with you and consistently praise them as they stay with you for longer. So in the beginning, you should be giving them a treat like every step, you know, to like reinforce that we're moving forward and you're staying in the same body position. And it's like, yes, good heel, yes, good heel. And you're just walking and then you're gonna give them a treat every other step and then you're gonna give them every three steps and then you're gonna give it after you've taken a bunch of steps and then you're gonna give it to them at the end of it so you start spreading out the amount of treats you have so you're teaching them that they kind of have to do this for a little bit longer to get the treat and a little bit longer to get the treat a little bit longer to get the treat and that's how we get the consistent at the end the end goal is walk down the sidewalk in a heel and I still give Freya treats consistently as she's walking in a heel because that's exactly what I want heel yes Good heel. Yes, good heel. Yes, good heel. Yes, good heel. Sit. Yes, good sit. Touch. Yes, sit. Lay down. Good girl. Roll over. That's not a roll over. Yes, good roll over. Yes. Good roll over. That roll over was just for me. We haven't drilled that one in a while. Another tip or another way that you guys can train this is by utilizing a wall in your apartment. It sucks because I just realized we don't have any just like flat long walls that don't have doors and stuff on it, but it still works and you'll still get what I mean because a lot of heel is body placement. And like I said, some people want their dogs to be like attached to their hip, which is fine. Just reinforce that behavior for your dog. For me, it's more about, yeah, like where her head is and aligned with me and also how far away she is. Like I do want her next to me. And a good way to work with that is teaching them heel between a wall because then you teach them how close they have to be to you. So let me show you what I mean. So if we're doing a heel, I can have her in between me and this wall and get her to walk with me. And in the beginning, we start out maybe a little spread out because the wall might startle your dog or they might not know what to do with that. But then you get closer and closer to the wall until they're learning like, oh, I have to be like squished in with mom. And then you can start spreading out from the wall again and seeing if they stay close to you. And if not, every time you move out and they move out, you just move back in until you both move out together. And that's kind of how we teach the consistent body placement. The wall is a good tool for that. Yeah. Good girl. Yes. Yes, good heel. 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 And so now if we spread out a little bit from the wall and kind of walk down the middle of the hallway. Yes, good heel. Yes, good heel. And your dog should be really reactive to where you're going and how fast you're spinning and wherever you're turning. That's of course the end goal. So the wall is something really good to utilize and to practice with. Another tip in general with basically any skill is to practice it inside of your apartment until it's like damn near perfect. And even if you always train in a specific room, like for us at the old apartment, it was always the living room. At this apartment, it's always in this room. So once they've mastered it in a specific room in your apartment, go to a new room. You think that it's not gonna matter, but it can. And you want them to feel comfortable to do it wherever you ask them to do it at. And getting them comfortable in your entire apartment is the first step. And then maybe do it right outside your door, like in the hallway of your apartment. And then you could do it outside in your backyard. Things with very little distractions and then work your way up to more distractions. So day one of, you know, heel work, I'm not gonna take her and try to get her to heel next to me when I'm walking around the dog park. She's gonna be way too distracted. She's gonna wanna play with the dogs and she hasn't mastered the skill yet. So she's not gonna give it to me perfectly. So until we have mastered it perfectly inside, inside with distractions, outside with minimal distractions, outside in different scenarios on the sidewalk, on the pavement, in grass, in gravel, in mulch, whatever, like literally try it in everything, then we can move up to all of those places with big distractions. Another general tip would be, as you guys saw, I kind of walked through how to do this, but all of this was, again, inside my apartment, but also without like a collar or a leash. So until she was able to master everything inside, that is when I brought out the leash and did it inside. And we never took the heel outside until she could do it very well inside first. 
Again, if you're trying to get her to master a certain skill and she does it perfectly inside, great. And then you immediately go outside on a leash and a collar when usually your walks previously are really pooly, they're all over the place, they just know they can sniff everywhere. It's not gonna be good. It's gonna be a disaster and you're gonna get really frustrated. So you have to work your way up to that. So practicing your leash and your collar or your harness or whatever you're using inside first, again with minimal distractions, and then step it up to a little bit more distractions inside before taking it outside. Okay, keys. Oh, that was such a hard case. <laughs> that was like an attack smooch. But that really is the breakdown in the baseline of how I taught Freya how to heal. It really is just being patient with your dog and not moving on to the next step until they're ready and until they've mastered it and they do clearly understand what you're asking of them before taking the next step to do something a little more challenging, before introducing the leash and the collar, before going outside, all of those things. And even when we were outside, it was again still starting from ground one. Like even as soon as you get outside, let's just practice the learning again back into a body position, marking it, yes, and then asking for it verbally, asking make sure that they get into it, do some around the world, do a little bit of forward backward work. Don't just expect to master it inside and immediately be able to master it on a 15, 20 minute, 30 minute walk. It is gonna be steps. And then eventually she was able to be sniffing and doing all the things and I could ask her to be like, Frey heal. And she immediately leaves what she's doing and come back good into a heal. heal. Yes, good heal. Yes, good girl. And we walk, 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 reward, 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 free her. And it was just a cycle and it was really good. And obviously such a good skill for dogs to know how to do. It just takes time and consistency. You have to mark the same body position the same way every time. And the more consistent you are, the quicker that they will pick up on what you're asking them to do. And the quicker they will learn the skill if you're more clear on what they're learning. I hope this little crash course was helpful. I know that there are like way more in-depth tutorials on YouTube about how to heal with your dog and everything. So definitely like watch other people as well. I did just want to show what worked for Frey and I because she did have some stellar heel work as a puppy. I was so proud. She was amazing. And it just, again, yeah, took a lot of time, took a lot of practice and a lot, a lot, a lot of consistency on my part and on her part. And as soon, again, if I could go back and as soon as I stopped being consistent, she stopped being consistent. And now the heel is not consistent anymore. And we're working on it to bring it back up to the high standard that she had when she was four or five, six months old. But I know that if she did it once, she can do it again and your dog can do it. Because as much as learning heel looks like it's such an intimate intimidating like trick or skill to teach your dog. It works just the same as teaching them sit. You do it the exact same way. It's just a little more intricate on like body positioning and like staying with you while moving. But the whole like classical conditioning, operant conditioning, all the things is still the same on how you train your dog to do anything. If you have any questions, like definitely leave them down below. I will try my best to get to everyone. I do you can't kick the camera. <laughs> As I was saying, if you guys have any questions, like let me know, leave them down below. I will try to get back to everyone in a timely manner to try to help as much as possible. And if you all have any tips, also leave them down below. We can all learn from each other. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You're just throwing tricks at me, huh? You're just like, give me all the Tritos. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching for Raya's little tutorial on how she learned to heal. This girl is ready to train. She wants all the Tritos. Sit. <laughs> we gotta work on a new skill soon because I want to teach her like an actual trick with you guys So make sure you're subscribed for future videos future training videos dog vlogs pup dates the whole nine yards Can I have a paw? What is that? What kind of paw is that? Thank you. Other paw. Other paw. Paw. No the other paw. I want the other one <laughs> And I will see you guys in the next video Stop. I don't want any more kisses. I don't want them <laughs> Bye guys.